participants i dr jaimini vyas welcome you all on behalf of kcg today is the third day of our session of faculty development program on physics before proceeding further i would like to give you certain instructions for this faculty development program before proceeding further i would like to introduce our today's expert dr v a rana he is a professor at gujarat university he will be delivering lecture on microwave and its applications we heartily welcome you sir on behalf of kcg friends today i will be delivering the lecture on microwaves and its applications so now i will share the screen and i will display the ppt presentation and through this ppt presentation i will deliver my talk we are familiar with the word microwaves we are dealing with the microwaves in our day to day life but we don't know much about the micro technology so today i will give you a brief idea about what is the microwaves and what are its applications and how it is important in our day to day life we many times hear about the microwaves many times we hear that microwaves produces the hazardous effects we are using the microwave ovens we are using the mobile phones sometimes we see the mobile towers on the road sides while traveling on the highways or in the city so we can say that we are surrounded by the microwaves microwaves are invisible radiations electromagnetic radiations we cannot see them but we use them in our day to day life so in this to our session we'll be talking about what are microwaves what are the peculiar properties of the microwaves which makes them so important in our life so with this brief introduction i will give you the outline of my lecture so first so first we will discuss about what are the microwaves then we'll discuss about the electromagnetic spectrum and what portion of the electromagnetic spectrum is occupied by the micro frequency band and how the micro frequency band is divided into sub bands then we'll focus on the properties and applications of the microwaves so the applications of the microwaves are divided into two parts in part one part we'll see how the microwaves are used as a carrier of information and in second part we'll see how the microwaves are used as a carrier of energy so in the first part that means uh in the, as a carrier of information we'll see the applications of microwaves in communication in radar and in remote sensing and if we consider the microwaves as a carrier of energy then its applications are divided into industrial control and measurement microwave heating material processing microwave chemistry and medical applications and finally we will conclude this lecture so let me tell you here that although i have, I have tried to cover many applications of the microwaves this is not a complete list of the microwave applications some of the applications are discussed here and many are not discussed but they are there we are using the microwaves in many more applications and we will discuss these applications of the microwaves considering their properties that means we'll try to understand what are the principles involved in these applications of the microwaves so first question is that what are the microwaves all of us knows that 
microwaves are nothing but the electromagnetic waves and microwaves like all electromagnetic radiation have an electrical component as well as a magnetic component that means electromagnetic radiation has variations of electric field and magnetic field with time as well as with position and this variations of electro electromagnetic fields forms the electromagnetic radiation so like all other radiations like the infrared radiation optical radiation ultraviolet radiation or the radio waves microwaves are also the electromagnetic waves but how the microwaves differs from the other electromagnetic radiations so we can say that microwaves differs from other electromagnetic radiation in the range of frequencies we can say that if the frequency of the electromagnetic wave is lying between 300 megahertz and 300 gigahertz then it is it can be said as a microwave let me tell you here that this is not the exact boundary of the microwaves but in general microwaves are defined as the electromagnetic radiations whose frequency range lies between 300 megahertz and 300 gigahertz that means if we have an electromagnetic radiation electromagnetic wave of frequency 10 gigahertz then we can say that it is a microwave and this is a very broad range of frequency we'll see in the next slide how this range of microwave frequency is further split it into other subbands now picturally we cannot see the microwave electromagnetic radiations but electromagnetic radiations can be represented picturally like this and here in this figure the variations of electric fields are shown and these are the variations blue blue colored curve is the variations of the magnetic field and here the electric field component and magnetic field component they are perpendicular to each other so if we, we say that this is the x axis this y axis and this is the z axis then the variations of electric field are in the y z plane and variations of magnetic field are in the x z plane so electric field and magnetic field components are perpendicular to each other not only that from the maxwell theory we said we know that electromagnetic waves propagate in the medium or in free space so that direction of propagation is perpendicular to the variations of electric field and magnetic field in this sense electromagnetic radiations are the transverse electromagnetic waves in short we call them tem wave in short we call it tem wave transverse electromagnetic meaning of this is that electric and magnetic field component variations are perpendicular to each other and they are perpendicular to the direction of uh, uh the direction of propagation is perpendicular to both electric field and magnetic field so we call it a transverse electromagnetic wave so now as we have seen that microwaves are electromagnetic waves and when we talk about the waves we think of the two parameters of wave they are the frequency and wavelength and we we know what is the wavelength and what is the frequency they are shown in this figure the number of cycles completed in one second is called the frequency and the separation between two peaks or two valleys of the wave is called a wavelength and wavelength and frequency of a wave is related by this equation frequency is given by velocity of light divided by wavelength right if wave is propagating in free space then we say we take this value of c as c into 10 to the power 8 meter per second and wavelength is measured in meter so this is the relationship between frequency and wavelength of a wave another important 
property related with the wave is the energy of the wave or energy of the photon we call it and it is given by E is equal to H into F where H is a Planck's constant and its value is 6.626 into 10 to the power minus 34 joule second. So with this value of H and frequency of the wave we can calculate the photon energy and here I have splitted the entire region of microwaves into four broad bands. One band is from 300 megahertz to 3 gigahertz and if we use this relationship we can calculate the frequency of the wave. 300 megahertz corresponds to 100 centimeter and 3 gigahertz corresponds to 10 centimeter. In this particular region sometimes we hear the word with microwave and that is RF. We say that RF and microwaves. So RF is nothing but it is the range of frequency starting from few hundred of megahertz to three gigahertz. These are called the radio frequency waves, RF waves, right? And if we calculate this range of energy, then it comes out to be this much 1.24 into 10 to the power minus 6 electron volt to 1.24 into 10 to the power minus 5 electron volt. Similarly, if we go from 3 gigahertz to 30 gigahertz, corresponding wavelength range is 10 centimeter to 1 centimeter and this, this wave, this range of frequency is also known as the centimeter waves. These waves are known as because their frequency the wavelength is of the order of centimeters. We call it a centimeter waves. And if we go beyond this, then it is 30 gigahertz to 300 gigahertz. Here, if you calculate the wavelength, it becomes 10 millimeter to 1 millimeter. And since this wavelength is of the order of millimeters, the alternate name of this range of frequency is millimeter waves. And if we go beyond this 300 gigahertz, then we enter into the submillimeter range. The length range is from 1 millimeter to 0.1 millimeter, and these waves are called submillimeter waves. If we go beyond this, then we have the um, uh, infrared radiation, then visible, and so on. But our focus in this lecture will be in this range only 300 megahertz to 300 gigahertz. We call them microwaves and they can be split into three parts like the RF waves, centimeter waves and the millimeter waves. Now we can discuss about what portion of the electromagnetic spectrum is occupied by the microwaves. Here a picture is shown and this picture shows the entire range of electromagnetic spectrum. It's starts from say 10 to the power 3 hertz that is uh, sorry uh, yeah this is this is the frequency range right it, it starts from say 10 to the power 5 hertz and as we go from this end left side to the right side the frequency is increasing and here the wavelength scale is shown where the wavelength of the wave increases from right as we go from right to left right since there is a, an inverse proportion between wavelength and frequency the scales are opposite right and here the photon energy scale is also shown and as you you can see that as we go away from low frequency wave to the high frequency the photon energy increases and here a broad division is given in terms of the biological effects that the electromagnetic radiation can produce. So one part, this green color portion is called non-ionizing radiation and microwaves belongs into this non-ionizing radiation and the other part which is ionizing radiation and this ionizing radiations we know that they are harmful to the human body. They produces the ionization of the 
molecules or the atoms, right? They, they, they ionize the atoms or molecules and they can damage the DNA cell of the body. So these radiations are very harmful radiations, right? They're, they're, they can produce, the, their energy is high enough to cause the ionization of the atom. So they are the ionizing rays. Microwave energy is not that much, uh, uh, is not having that much energy to cause the ionization. Of course, it produces the thermal effect or heating effect. And this heating effect can cause some harm to the human body if the power of the microwave radiation is high and or if the exposure to the micro radiation is for a longer duration, then definitely it can cause some harmful effect to the human body. Because in the applications of the micros, we'll see that micros produces the heating effect and this, this property of the microwave is used for cooking the food, right, or for heating the material. So the radiation which can cook the food it can definitely cook our body, body parts. So in that way, if the micro radiation power is high or the exposure to the, the even low power micro radiation for a longer duration, it can cause the harmful effect to the human body. So here you can see from this figure that this, radio, this spectrum ex, uh, uh, covers all the waves uh, starting from radio waves to the, say, gamma rays. And this frequency span covered is from 10 to the power 3 hertz to the 10 to the power 21 hertz, right? And so uh, this, this micro frequency range is starting somewhere here, right? 300 megahertz to the 300 gigahertz. It covers this much range, okay? And here the and uh, entire electromagnetic spectrum is uh, is helpful to the uh, human being, and they have the their own applications, right? If we use the even if we use these high energy uh, waves in a controlled manner, then they can uh, be uh, they can be of use to the human man uh, to the humankind. Okay, so here you see. Uh, if we consider this range, uh, uh, say uh, uh, 500 kilohertz to 1600 kilohertz, it is the it, this this band of frequency is used in the AM radio, amplitude modulated radio, and similarly the frequency range starting from 88 megahertz to 108 megahertz is used by the FM radio. TV broadcast uses the 54 to 700 megahertz frequency. Mobile phones uses the microwaves, right? It uses the frequency band starting from 900 megahertz to 2.4 gigahertz. And we'll discuss more about these, these applications and also about the radar application. Radar uses the micro frequency band from 1 to 100 gigahertz. Wireless data communication uses the frequency of 2.4 gigahertz. Right, and microwave oven, which uses the frequency 2.45 gigahertz. Right, so and uh, similarly, this high frequency radiations also has some uh, applications. Visible part of this electromagnetic spectrum we use in our day-to-day -day life. Right now, you are watching this video, so it is because of this visible radiations. Right, our eye can sense this this particular range of frequencies, so we can see the things, right? And uh, infrared we cannot see, but infrared can be sensed by using some sensors. Similarly, ultraviolet radiations cannot can uh, we cannot see, but they can be sensed by the sensor, and they have their own applications. Okay, so with this, so here the point to remember is that the microwave. Uh, region of the electromagnetic spectrum is very small, but microwave has uh, uh, a lot of applications. Large, large number of applications of micro radiations are there. So now we'll divide the micro entire micro frequency bands into sub bands. 
anytime we hear about the C band or X band or S band, uh, uh, whenever we listen about the uh, satellites, we hear about the C band transponder or X band transponder and so on. So wh what do we mean by this S band or X band or C band that we try to understand? So micro frequency bands, it is a very uh, it's divided into the subbands. The reason for dividing this microfrequency band into subbands is this. It is very difficult to design one transmission structure which can carry the entire range of frequencies of micro signals efficiently. We cannot have a single transmission structure we can, which can transfer the entire band of microfrequencies. Right? So, we can have the different structures for various different bands of frequencies, right? So this is one reason why microfrequency band is split into subbands. Then, similarly, we cannot have a single device which can generate or amplify the micro signals, right? We can uh, we can have a device which can generate the micro signals at a free frequency or within a narrow range of frequencies. But entire range of entire band of micro frequency cannot be generated by a single device, and that is why it is essential to divide the micro frequency band into the subbands. And so, and therefore, micro frequency spectrum has been divided into small segments of frequency based on the applications and the convenience. So, here is the list of the micro frequency bands. And these various uh, band designations are given by IEEE. And these designations are like this. We, we call VHF band, very high frequency band. It ranges from 0.15 gigahertz to 0.3 gigahertz. And this particular band has prominent applications. Here, uh, this, this column shows the prominent applications of the various bands of the, the frequencies, right? So this VHF band has its application in the FM radio. UHF band, it is the ultra high frequency band. It ranges from 0.3 gigahertz to 1 gigahertz. Here, let me remind you that 1 gigahertz is 10 to the power 9 hertz, right? 1 gigahertz is 10 to the power 9 hertz. So we say that microwaves has a frequency of the order of gigahertz. 1 gigahertz is 10 to the power 9 hertz. That means this electromagnetic wave has oscillations uh, 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 um, 10 to the power 9 oscillations in one second. Right? So uh, it is the frequency of the microwave. So ultra high frequency is 0.3 to 1 gigahertz. And this particular band is used in TV and satellite communication. Then L band. It ranges from 1 to 2 gigahertz. It is used for surveillance radar. And S band ranges from 2 to 4 gigahertz. And this particular band of frequency is used for navigation and cordless phones. It is used in cordless phones. C band ranges from 4 to 8 gigahertz. It is used in airborne radar. X band frequency ranges from 8 to 12 gigahertz. And this frequency band is used in microwave links and it has some military applications. Similarly, KU band, it is from 12 to 18 gigahertz. And this range is used in mobile communication. K band ranges from 18 to 26 gigahertz. It is used in multi channel communication. Then there is a car band. Car band ranges from 26 to 40 gigahertz. It is used in photo radars. I have mentioned here some some applications, but there can be many other applications of a particular band of microwave frequency, right? Then when we enter into this range, 40 to 300 gigahertz, it is the millimeter range, right? And this range of frequency is used in radar, advanced communicator system remote sensing and astronomy. If we go beyond 300 gigahertz, then we have the submillimeter range. And this range is used for image processing and 
infrared radar. We have seen that the microwaves are high frequency waves and uh, in the uh, in uh, in short time we will see that microwaves are used in communication and uh, communication systems are formed by some circuits and circuits are dealing with the microwaves microwaves uh, components microwave devices right so and we know the conventional electronic circuits which are used in the radios or in the television right this this devices deals with the low frequencies low frequency in comparison with the microwave frequencies right so we can split the the circuits into two parts one we call the low frequency circuits and the uh, electronics which deals with the low frequency circuits we call it low frequency electronics and another is the high frequency electronics high frequency here we mean that that is a micro frequency right now there is a remarkable difference between these two the conventional electronics or low frequency electronics which which we are dealing uh, the same principles cannot be applied to the microwave frequencies when we enter into the microwave range of frequencies the principles uh, of the operation of the circuit elements are different the circuit element structures are different uh, their construction is different right so it is essential to understand what is the difference between the low frequency electronics and high so here i have tried to in low frequency circuits the wavelength is much more greater than the dimension of the circuit or the circuit elements and there is a negligible variation in the phase across the dimension of the circuit so here an example is given suppose you take a low frequency circuit element called resistor and we know the length of the resistance is uh, low frequency component which is a resistor and its length is suppose 1 cm okay and this resistor is connected in a circuit which is using a frequency 10 kilohertz right so if frequency of the wave or of the electrical signal is 10 kilohertz then its wavelength is 3000 meters okay so if we take this as a wavelength of the electrical signal and length of this circuit element is 1 cm and if we calculate the phase delay produced in this when this electrical signal passes through this what amount of phase delay is produced in this it can be calculated using this equation it is 360 degree into physical length divided by wavelength physical length of this is 1 cm and wavelength is 3000 m so phase delay comes out to be 0.0012 degree this is a negligible phase very small phase Right. Uh, we, we cannot even notice it okay so and, and this is a, uh, why this phase difference is this much less the reason is that the wavelength of this signal which which this element is telling is much large in comparison with the dimension of this element okay this dimension is of the order of centimeter whereas this is of the order of kilometer right so phase difference is negligible is small and under under such circumstances we can apply the kirchhoff's voltage law or kirchhoff's current law or basic network um uh, uh laws to the circuit to analyze the circuit okay and if we use these laws and the basic network laws we call it the circuit theory right that means we can apply the circuit theory approach to analyze the low frequency circuits right so when the dimensions of the circuit elements are much less in comparison with the wavelength the voltage drop between any two points or across the circuit element can be measured conveniently we can easily measure the voltage drop across this right now we consider the case of a high frequency circuit say microwave circuit and in this case the wavelength of the signal is comparable with or it is less than the dimension of the circuit elements right 
So, and there is a significant change in the phase of the signal. Here an example is given. If you take the frequency of the signal as 10 gigahertz, right? It is 10 into 10 to the power 9 hertz. And the wavelength corresponding to this frequency is 3 centimeter, right? So this is the wavelength of the signal with which the same element is telling. Now in this case, if you calculate the phase delay using this equation, it comes out to be 118.8 degree. So you see how much phase is produced, phase difference is produced for a signal of 10 gigahertz frequency. Okay, so we can say that here the phase delay is appreciable. So this shows the high frequency signal, right? And wavelength is small. Uh, the wavelength of this signal is comparable with the dimension of this the circuit element. Under this condition, the phase delay is appreciable. Okay, so under such circumstances, the propagation of the signal must be taken into consideration while analyzing the circuit. And when we take the propagation effect, then the analytical approach is called wave theory approach. We are now considering the signal as a wave, okay? And we have to take into account the propagation effect of the wave in the circuit. So this is one remarkable difference. Then another difference is in the use of transmission line. Any electronic circuit, if you consider, it will have some circuit elements like the uh, active circuit elements like the transistors, towers, uh, or some vacuum tube device, and some passive circuit elements like resistor, capacitor, or the inductors connected in a particular fashion to perform a particular operation. Right? And these connections are connections of these components in a circuit are to the wire, right? And sometimes it is, uh, we observe that the uh, electrical signal is produced, which is of low frequency, right? And that signal has to be transferred to some other place. For example, the electrical power, which is generated at the power station, right? It has to be transferred to the, the various factories or at the home, right? And for this transmission purpose, we use the power parallel wire line. Similarly, for telephonic communication also, we use the parallel wire lines, right? So if we want to transfer the low frequency signals from one point to the other point, we use the parallel wire transmission line. But if the frequency of the signal is high, then we cannot use this type of the parallel wire lines, right? Because now the radiation effect will come into play. These wires, conducting wires or the transmission lines, they themselves will behave as the antenna. They will start radiating the electromagnetic waves and there will be a lot of loss of the power, right? So sufficient amount of power may not be delivered from the source to the load. And under, so they, we cannot use this type of the transmission lines with the, uh, for the high frequency signal transmission. We, we, we should have to go for some other means. So if the frequency is of the order of megahertz or gigahertz, then we go for the coaxial cables, right? We use the coaxial cable. This type of cable we are using uh, at our home also. We connect our TV transmitter with the disc antenna, which is placed in the terrace through this type of the cable. So this cable, we call it RF cable, radio frequency cable, right? And these cables are suitable for frequency of 2, 1 gigahertz. Or um, if it is well designed, then we can go beyond this, but few gigahertz. We cannot go above that. Because again, the uh, losses, uh, transmission losses will take into this, right? These cables here, 
this cable in this picture zone is very small. Uh, it's a piece of a cable, but these cables can be thousands of kilometer long, right? And uh, if the uh, frequency of the signal is high, right, uh, uh, in the gigahertz range, then a lot of attenuation of the signal takes place. Then this this type of cable becomes inefficient, and the, then we have to go for some other means. And what are the means? We go for the waveguides, waveguide structures. They are the guiding structures, right? And the, how how they look here? A picture is shown. There is a waveguide, right? And sometimes it is required to change the direction of the propagation of the wave. Then this type of bands are also used. So here, the rectangular waveguide structures are shown. And they, they how how they are rectangular? You can see there is a hollow metallic pipe, right, made up of copper or say brass, something like that, with uh, a silver or gold coating uh, inside the uh, uh, coating on the inside wall of the waveguide. So this type of guiding structures are there. So the electrical signal which is produced, uh, or the micro signal which is produced by some generator is launched into this waveguide, right? And now the wave is propagating in the form of electromagnetic wave, right? The reflections of the wave will take place from the inner wall of the waveguide. And the signal uh, will be guided along a definite path. So these, these structures are known as the waveguide. This is uh, an example of a, uh, this is a, uh, an example of a waveguide. It's a rectangular waveguide. You can also have the cylindrical waveguide. Right? In that case, the cross-sectional shape of the waveguide will be a cylinder. Uh, here it is shown, there is a cylindrical waveguide. Right? There is a rectangular waveguide. And these are the pictures, uh, uh, picture or presentation of the coaxial cable. This is a two-wire line and this is a coaxial cable. Okay. And more recent uh, guiding structure or the transmission line structures are the planar transmission lines, right? These waveguides are bulky and they occupy large, large volume, large space, right? But the smaller or the miniaturized version of this type of transmission lines are the micro strip lines, right? And this, this, this uh, small structure transmission lines are used with the uh, microwave integrated circuits or solid state microwave devices, okay? But they are also used to transmit the electromagnetic uh, signal uh, of very high frequency. Okay, uh, of, uh, frequency the signal lies in the micro range. Right? Then, they, then also this type of uh, micro strip line structures are used. Okay, so here the point is that. There is a difference in the transmission lines of the low frequency signals and the microwave signals. Then we come to the generator part. We have talked about the microwaves, what are their frequency range. But now question may arise that how the microwaves are generated. Microwaves uh, are generated by some devices, special type of the devices. Here, uh, let us have a comparison between the low frequency generator and the micro generator. So here you can see an electronic circuit, say some oscillator circuit consisting of some active and passive circuit elements, right? And when we supply some DC voltage or DC power to the circuit, it converts this DC energy into the uh, AC energy and we get the electrical signal of a frequency which is decided by the uh, L and C component in the circuit, an inductor or capacitor connected in the circuit. Right? So using this type of circuit, we can generate the uh, signal of a particular frequency. Right? Frequency may range from, uh, say, a uh, um, few tens of hertz to kilohertz or sometimes in the megahertz range. But if we want, if we enter into the gigahertz range or micro range, 
this type of circuit becomes uh, useless. You cannot use this type of circuit for generation of the microwaves, right? We have to go for signal special type of the devices. And many type of devices are there, microwave generators are there. Here I have shown some pictures, some uh, widely used devices. So there's a picture of a magnetron. It's a picture of a magnetron. Magnetron uh, can generate the microwave signal or it can generate the electromagnetic signal whose frequency lies in the microwave range. Right? So basically this magnetron is also supplied with the uh, DC power, DC source. Right? When we supply some DC power to it, it converts this DC energy into the RF or microwave. Okay? So this is the magnetron. And there is a picture of a klystron tube. A klystron is, uh, uh, can also produce the microwaves. Okay. And there is a picture of a traveling wave tube. Traveling wave tubes are used for amplification of the microwave signal. Okay. As you can see in this picture, it has two ports. They say input port and the output port. So the signal that is to be amplified is supplied at the input port. And through the process of velocity modulation uh, and the punching, the uh, energy from DC is supplied to the AC, right? And the signal gets amplified by the time it uh, reaches the output port, okay? So some uh, process is taking place through which the uh, transfer of energy from DC to AC takes place, right? And we get the amplified signal here, right? So many here is that the uh, there is a difference in the low frequency generation and the microwave frequency generation. The circuits or the devices which we use for generation of the low frequency signals cannot be used at microwave frequencies. We have to go for some special type of the devices. And what about the passive components, right? Low frequency circuits uses this type of the components, transistors, resistors, capacitors, right? Towers, uh, some ICs, low frequency integrated circuits, and all these things, right? But microwave circuits cannot use this type of the devices. Some special type of the devices are used. And these devices are known as the microwave passive components. Here I have shown some some waveguide devices, right? The devices are made from the waveguides, but it is possible to have some other type of the passive devices, right? For example, here the uh, uh, these, these are the various T's or junctions, right? Junctions to combine the microwave signal or to split the microwave signal. Right, E plane T, H plane T, the magic T. Okay, these are the horn antennas, which are used to radiate the microwave signal in in the free space or to receive the signal from this free space. Right? These are the horn antennas, and there's a frequency meter and uh, some detector devices are there. Right, the and there's a directional coupler, and there's a a klystron mount. The, we have seen the picture of a klystron tube. So klystron tube generates the microwave signal, but this signal should be launched into a waveguide for transmission purpose. So the klystron tube is mounted on this type of structure, special type of uh, structure is designed to which the klystron can be mounted, right? And klystron generates the microwave signal, which can be launched into this. And at this end of, of this klystron mount, some other circuit elements can be connected, okay? So, again, here the point is that the microwave frequency components are very much different than the low frequency components. So, friends, we were discussing about the difference between the uh, low frequency circuits and the microwave circuits. And we have seen some of the 
passive circuit elements which are used at the low frequency uh, used in the low frequency circuits and the micro circuits then we know that the low frequency electronics has some intuitive circuits similarly we can have the micro intuitive circuits integrated circuits have the miniaturized form of the circuits in a small chip of silicon we can have thousands of circuit elements we know this right and the micro uh, it is possible to have micro integrated circuits in, we, in short we call it mic so and this mic are further split into two types one is known as the HMIC or hybrid microwave integrated circuit and another is the MMIC monolithic microwave integrated circuits now what is the difference between these two MMIC consists of an integrated circuit built on a single crystal chip of semiconductor all active and passive elements are made on the same semi insulating substrate all the circuit elements are the integral part of a single chip right that is the monolithic microwave integrated circuit in hybrid microwave integrated circuit active devices and some passive devices in the chip form are mounted on the substrate on which remaining circuit elements have been fabricated using the thin film technique it is a combination it is hybrid of the integrated circuit and the discrete circuit elements so this this shows the hybrid integrated circuit right so various circuit elements uh, some ic's are there some uh, uh, active circuit elements are there and passive circuit elements right they are connected to the uh, micro strip lines and this forms the hybrid and this is the integrated circuit then another difference between the microwave and the uh, micro circuit and the low frequency circuit is in the analysis for analyzing the low frequency circuits we use the parameters like the impedance parameters or z parameters admittance parameters or y parameters hybrid parameters or h parameters and abcd parameters here in low frequency circuits it is easy to measure voltage and current so we define the parameters in terms of voltages and currents right so measurable quantities in low frequency circuits are input and output voltages and currents and that is why we define these parameters in terms of voltage and current okay and there are various formalisms like the z formalism or z parameter formalism y parameter formalism. H parameter formalism or ABCD parameter formalism, right? But this circuit analysis approach cannot be used at micro frequencies, right? Because micro now now we know that micro frequencies we we are dealing with the fields rather than the currents and voltages. We are dealing with the electromagnetic fields and the energy propagate in the form of the wave. So we have to use the wave approach for analyzing analyzing the micro circuits right so now we we need to have a different formalism and this formalism is called scattering matrix formalism and elements of this scattering matrix are the s parameters or the scattering parameters so now we will define the s parameter in terms of the waves right so s parameters are nothing but they are the parameters which are linearly related with reflected wave amplitude to the incident wave amplitude right and for uh, for a two port network the relation between incident wave and reflected wave are expressed in terms of scattering parameters s s i j and it is written here see we we relate the uh, waves incident wave here you, you see that the, our um, micro network this this block this box we call it a black box it consists of some micro network right and this uh, 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 here we have the incident wave at the input port we have the incident wave right represented by a1 
and similarly at the output port we have the incident wave represented by A2 and the reflected wave at the input port is B1 and here it is B2, outgoing wave is B2, okay, outgoing wave at the output port is B2, right, so these, these, these wave properties are measurable, right, and not the current and voltage like in the low frequency circuits. So we define the parameters in terms of these waves, wave properties, right? And this this incident and reflected wave at the input port and the output port are related by these linear relationships, right? V1 is equal to S11 A1 plus S12 A2, and V2 is equal to S21 A1 plus S22 A2. So the, the, these are the S parameters: S11, S12, S21, and S22. They are nothing but the uh, uh, reflection and the transmission coefficients of the of this device or this micro circuit okay so here the point is that the uh, circuit analysis approach at micro frequency is also different than the uh, analysis of the low frequency circuit we'll not go in much detail of this but just uh, this gives an idea that analysis, uh, analysis of the micro circuits is done in a different way. Okay. Now we come to the properties and applications of the microwaves. So far we have discussed about the uh, microwaves and what are the microwave circuits. But now we'll discuss about the properties and applications of the microwaves. So very first property of the microwave is that it has a very large bandwidth right so at micro frequencies bandwidth availability is more and micro have large bandwidths compared to the common band, common bands like medium wave short wave and ultra high frequency waves and because of this large bandwidth we can accommodate large amount of information if we use the microwave as a carrier signal okay and the Average advantage of large bandwidth is that the frequency range of information channels will be a small percentage of the carrier frequency and hence more information can be transmitted at higher speed. More information can be transmitted at this high speed is another advantage of using the microwaves uh, in communication. Okay, here an example is given. Suppose you take a 60 megahertz signal as a carrier and if you consider 10% of it, then we get 6 megahertz. And 6 megahertz is approximately one TV channel. Okay. On the other hand, if you take the carrier frequency of 6 gigahertz, and if you take 10% of it, it comes out to be 600 megahertz. And 600 megahertz is equivalent to 100 TV channels. Right. So meaning here is that if you use 6 gigahertz as a carrier, you can transmit, uh, you can uh, uh, broadcast 100 TV channels, right? Whereas if you use the uh, 6 megahertz, uh, 60 megahertz as a carrier, then you can transmit only one TV channel, right? So, uh, meaning here is that the microwave at micro frequency, the capacity of carrying information is enhanced enormously. Then another property of microwave is that microwaves travel by line of sight, like the traveling of light rays. We know that the light rays travels along the line of sight. Same way microwaves also travels along the line of sight. And the advantage of this is that we can establish the communication between transmitter and, establish, uh, and the receiver wirelessly. Right? Wireless communication is possible because of this property of the microwave. Right? And what is the meaning of this line of sight communication? LOS, in short we call it LOS. Line of sight is a visible state line between the sender, uh, sender and the receiver. Right? Uh, it is a visible straight line between the sender and the receiver. Okay, so 
microwave provides the wireless communication. Nowadays, we are using the wireless communication, and uh, in this wireless communication, microwaves are used. And it is because of this property of the microwaves. Microwaves travels by line of sight, right? And this wireless communication is can be divided into two types. One is called the terrestrial or the earth-based communication and another is the satellite communication. So, let us understand what is the terrestrial communication. Microwave signals can propagate through Earth's atmosphere and provide the line of sight communication. Right? This is this is another advantage. This is this is another property of the microwave that microwave can propagate through the Earth's atmosphere, right? And it provides the line of sight communication, okay, between the transmitter and receiver. So if the transmitter and receiver are kept at a distance of 25 to 45 kilometers, then one can establish the communication between the transmitter and receiver wirelessly. Okay, and a terrestrial communication system is used for transfer of audio, video, and other data within a local geographical network. Right, and why only this much distance, 25 to 45? If we have the distance larger than this, then the Earth's curvature comes into the picture and it obstruct the uh, transmission of the microwave signal, right? So the uh, possible distance between the transmitter and receiver is between 25 to 45 kilometers. And of course, you can increase this distance by using the repeater stations, right? Uh, here, a picture is shown, a typical layout of the micro radio link is shown here. Here is the trans uh, terminal station, we call it a uh, transmitter, and here is the uh, terminal station 2, we call it receiver, right? And so, and in between these two, there are some uh, repeater stations, right? So in this way, using the number of repeat repeater stations, you can increase the uh, range of transmission of the microwave signal, okay? So this is the side view of the typical microwave link, uh, microwave repeater link. And this is the top view, okay? So here you, you can see there are various uh, natural bodies like the mountains or the lakes or the some uh, uh, man-made buildings are there, high, uh, tall buildings are there, right? Uh, microwave provides a line of sight communication. So uh, this type of structure should not come in the path of the microwave signal. So to avoid uh, the obstruction due to this type of the structures, the one can have the repeater stations. So here the lo location of the repeater station is very much important. This repeater st uh, station should be located in such a way that uh, micro signals are not obstructed by the man-made or the natural objects. Okay, so in this way, using the repeater stations, we can establish a long-distance communication. Okay, uh, so we can have the terrestrial communication, uh, uh, which which can be a short haul or the intrastate com communication, and another is the long haul or the interstate communication, okay? So in interstate means uh, it is used to carry information for relatively large distances, such as the interstate. And if you want to establish the communication between the uh, cities within the same same state, then you, you can have the intrastate terrestrial communication system, okay? So this is one application of the microwave in communication is terrestrial communication. Then there comes the, uh, here the advantages of the uh, terrestrial communication is uh, listed. 
you see no physical transmission lines such as the coaxial cable or the optical fiber cables are required underground facilities are minimized microwaves are more readily propagated around physical obstacles such as water bodies mountains etc delay times are greatly reduced minimum interference between the channels increased reliability and less maintenance and frequency reuse is also possible then then another is the satellite communication right one property of microwave is in that it can uh, have a line of sight communication another property of microwave is that it can pass through the ionosphere so because of these two properties microwaves are used in the satellite communication so uh, in satellite communication we use the satellite as a as a link as a repeater station right and when the satellites are used as a repeater station very long distance communication can be established right so we can say that the intercontinental communication can be established if we uh, use the satellite communication okay so in satellite communication microwaves are used and why microwaves are used because microwaves can pass through the ionosphere layer we know that our surface our surface is surrounded by the ionospheric layers right and of course this ionospheric layers can also be used for communication purpose but there we use the short wave signals right the uh, low frequency signals right low frequency signals if transmitted from a transmitted in the space then they get reflected by the ionosphere right and this reflected signal can be received by the receiver station so in this way using the ionosphere we can establish the communication but in this case the distance between transmitter and the receiver will be comparatively less right but instead of that if we use the satellite as a repeater station uh, to establish the communication between the transmitter and receiver then it is possible to have a large coverage area right and uh, uh, since the microwaves can pass through the ionosphere layer microwaves are used in the satellite communication so here a typical picture is shown it is the hot station which uh, transmit the signal information signal in this in the direction of the satellite the satellite is normally a uh, geostationary satellite which is kept at the height of about 36000 km right and uh, the uh, uh, and we know why the geostationary satellite is used uh, when we use the geostationary satellite its position relative to the transmitter and receiver remains fixed throughout the day okay and throughout the year so a continuous communication can be established between the transmitter and the receiver using the satellite okay and various bands which are used for satellite communication are listed here right say s band c band x band and k bands are used for this here you have to remember one point that the uh, frequency of the transmitted signal and the frequency of the uh, signal sent back by the satellite to the receiver they are not the same they are different and they are kept different uh, different deliberately in order to avoid the interference between the transmitted signal and the reflect and the uh, reflected signal right uh, from the satellite okay so this is there right satellite communication is possible because of the microwaves right and why microwaves are used because microwaves can pass through the ionosphere layer of the earth atmosphere and here are some examples of the satellite communication systems are given direct to home television 
you are watching the television at our home, it is because of the satellite communication, right? Uh, and the global system of mobile communication, GSM, you are familiar with this. This system also uses the microwaves. Then GPS system used for navigation, it also uses the microwaves, right? And Apart from the long distance communication, using the microwaves, you can have the short distance communication, wireless communication, of course, right? You can have the short distance wireless communication. And the examples of short distance wireless communication are the wireless local area networks. In short, we call it WLANs, right? It uses the frequency of 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz, right? Cordless telephones used at home also operate at the common micro frequency of 2.4 gigahertz and 5.8 gigahertz. Then we are very much familiar and we are using the Bluetooth technology. Bluetooth also uses the 2.4 gigahertz frequency, which lies in the micro reach. And using the Bluetooth technology, we can have the communication between the various devices electronic devices like the uh, computer, laptop, or the gaming console, or the printer, or the mouse, or the headphones, right? So we can have the wireless communication between the uh, main device with the other devices, right? And this, this, this Bluetooth technology uses the microwaves. And another important property of microwave is that it has a very small wavelength. We have seen that microwaves has frequency, a wavelength of the order of centimeters. And the advantage of having small wavelength is that the antenna size is reduced greatly, right? And uh, reduced antenna size is advantageous in the uh, radar system, right? So when the uh, these short wavelengths of microwaves have advantage in the radar system. Radar requires narrow beam of electromagnetic radiation so that it can detect the smaller targets, right? As the frequency increases, directivity increases and beam width decreases, right? So at higher frequencies or at the lower wavelengths, the beam width is smaller. Beam width of the radiated beam by the radar antenna is small and when the beam width is small the uh, beam can detect a smaller target right so uh, the small wavelength of the microwave is useful in the radar system and at micro frequencies it is easier to design and fabricate high gain antenna as compared to the low frequency signals right you can have the high power gain of the antenna at micro frequencies and right here you see the power gain is inversely proportional to square of the wavelength right so smaller the wavelength higher will be the power gain and if power gain is high then power uh, power requirement in the communication system or in the radar system will be less right so at microwave, the power requirements of transmitter become very small as compared to that the medium frequency and high frequency due to the high power, uh, high gain of the antennas. So radars uses the microwaves. Okay. So here a typical system of radar is shown. And radars we know basically they are used to detect the targets which are at far distance, right? So, uh, uh, radar not only detect the target, but it, it can also measure the velocity of the target with which target is moving. And it can also have the information about the distance or about the direction of the target, right? So, all these informations can be obtained 
by sitting in a room, right? Uh, all the information about the the target can be obtained by sitting in a room using a radar system. And radar uses the microwaves because when we use the microwaves in radar system, then the antenna size is reduced greatly. Okay, so this is that. Then radar itself has many applications. We have seen the basic principle of radar, right? And radar uses the microwaves, but radar itself has many applications. Here, some applications are listed. It has the military applications like the air and marine navigation, detection and tracking of aircraft, missiles, and spacecrafts, missile guidance, fire control for missiles and artillery, reconnaissance. Then it has many civilian applications like the navigational aid on ground and sea, detecting the height of the plane above the ground. It is used for aiding the aircraft at height to land other under poor visibility or adverse weather conditions, etc. It is used for satellite surveillance. It is used as police radar, police radar right, and for detecting the speed of moving targets or and yeah, the radar has some scientific applications also. Radars are used in astronomy, mapping and imaging, precision distance measurements, remote sensing of natural resources. Okay. Then microwaves are also used uh, as a motion detector. Okay. So it, it basically works on the principle of Doppler effect. And the motion detector itself has many applications. So some applications are listed here, right? Then we proceed further to see the another application area of the microwaves. Microwaves are used in remote sensing, right? In remote sensing, we obtain information about an object without physically in contact with the object. And remote sensing principle is same as the radar system, right? The ability of microwaves to penetrate to Earth's ionosphere and travel in space makes them suitable for the remote sensing applications. And there are two types of the remote sensing. One is the active remote sensing, another is the passive remote sensing. Now, what is the difference between these two? In active remote sensing, the active sensors are used which provide their own energy source for illumination. Here an example is given, a, a simple figure is shown, which explains the active remote sensing. So here a satellite is there, right? and satellite sends the electromagnetic radiation towards the uh, uh, object like an Earth, right? So the this radiation falls on the Earth's surface. They interact with the surface of the Earth and they are re-radiated. And this re-radiated signal is again received by the satellite. It is processed and uh, through this processing of the signal, information about the Earth's surface can be obtained. Right? So this is an active remote sensing. Active remote sensing, you see the uh, uh, a source which generates the electromagnetic radiation, right? And another type is the passive remote sensing. In passive remote sensing, the satellite is not radiating the signal, right? This the electromagnetic radiation from the source, like the sun, is falling on the earth surface, right? And uh, this, this, uh, uh, after the interaction with this surface of the Earth, the uh, signal is reflected or re-radiated. And this re-radiated signal is received by the satellite, right? And uh, from this uh, signal, the satellite can have information about the surface of the Earth, right? So this is called passive remote sensing. Remote sensing uses the microwaves. And uh, microwaves has certain advantages over the 
uh, other radiations in remote sense right so uh, what are the advantages microwave can penetrate through cloud cover has dust and rain micro sensors can operate in all weather conditions and environments and because of the larger wavelength they penetrate deeper in the object in comparison to the infrared and visible radiations you see in remote sensing infrared and visible radiations can also be used okay but the penetrating power of the microwave is more microwave can go deeper in the surface of the earth okay so or or the object that is to be sensed right? it can penetrate deeper so it can have uh, more information or better information about the uh, object okay then micro remote sensing do not require sun radiation particularly passive micro remote sensing now uh, sorry active micro remote sensing do not require sun radiation so the micro remote sensing satellites do not require to be sun synchronous and micro remote sensing is possible day and night remote sensing itself has many applications i have listed here and these applications are broadly classified into three categories one is the environmental purposes second one is for the military purposes and third one is in the space exploration right so remote sensing has many application areas and remote sensing uses the microwaves this shows how much important the microwaves are in remote sensing so so far we have discussed the various applications of microwaves as a information carrier but this has some disadvantages also micro technology has some disadvantages right just like any other technology right all technology has their own advantages and disadvantages similarly microwave technology also has some uh, advantages and disadvantages so uh, let us have a look at what are the disadvantages of the microwaves number 1 microwaves components are more expensive right higher atmospheric losses microwaves are susceptible not all frequency but certain frequencies of the microwave range are susceptible to rain snow and electromagnetic interferences micro technology rely more on gs gallium arsenide technology instead of the silicon tech gs technology is uh, Uh, somewhat complex and it is uh, expensive right in comparison with the silicon technology this can be considered as a disadvantage of the micro technology and higher component losses takes place right and the uh, lower output powers from active devices right the that means efficiency of the micro generators are comparatively lower than the low frequency generators and it needs the number of repeater stations as micro line of sight link over the ground cannot have a range greater than about 4 to 60 km due to the earth's curvature okay this point we have already discussed that if you want to have long distance communication right terrestrial communication then we should have number of repeater stations more number of repeater stations so this uh, increases the cost uh, for establishing the repeater stations then another disadvantage is that if you want to have a terrestrial communication between transmitter and the receiver then the path of the signal should be obstacle free right no obstruction in the path of the electromagnetic radiation should be there and the cost of implementing the communication infrastructure is high right and the another important uh, disadvantage of microwave technology is that high power microwaves produces the hazardous effect right microwaves 
can produce the hazardous effect if the power of the radiation is high. Right? So whenever you are uh, dealing with a microwave signal, you should be careful about the uh, hazardous effects produced by the microwaves. So once we have discussed the application area of microwaves in communication, we can have the another application area. So now the applications of microwaves are divided into three broad categories. One is the industrial application, scientific and medical application. So uh, the, apart from their widespread use in radar and communication, microwaves are finding interesting applications in several other areas. And these are known as the industrial, scientific, and medical applications. In short, we call it ISM applications. Okay, and the, the frequencies allocated for ISM applications are 915 megahertz, 2450 megahertz, and 4800 megahertz. Okay, and uh, there are many applications that we consider these applications, industrial control and measurements, micro heating, micro processing of materials, micro chemistry, and medical applications. So microwaves are used for industrial control and measurements. And why microwaves are used? It is because microwaves exhibit the properties of reflection, absorption, and transmission, right? So when some material is exposed to the microwaves, then depending upon the structure of the material, microwaves can pass through the material, it can be absorbed by the material, or it can be reflected by the material. Right? So here, this picture shows all the three properties. Some material, a slab of material is there, and it is irradiated by the microwaves. And if this material is a metal, then microwaves are reflected. All metals reflect the microwaves. Microwaves cannot pass the metals. Okay. And there are some materials which absorb the microwaves. Right. And the examples of such materials are the water and polar solvents. Polar organic solvents absorb the microwaves. And there are some materials which are transparent to the microwaves. Right. This, this materials may not transport, may not transmit the optical signal. It can be opaque for the optical signal, but it can pass the microwaves, right? And the examples of such materials are the ceramics, glass, or the Teflon, okay? So, microwave has this property. Microwaves exhibits the properties of reflection, absorption, and transmission, and because of that, Microwave finds its application in the industrial control and measurements. So here I have given an example that microwaves can be used to measure thickness of the metal sheets. Okay, and here which property of the microwave is used? Microwaves reflects the microwaves are reflected from the metal surface. Okay, so if you you want to monitor the thickness of the metal sheet then the microwaves can be used. And what is the principle here? At micro frequency, skin depth in the metal is very small, and therefore a plain metal surface causes a total reflection of the waves. And skin depth of the microwave of the electromagnetic radiation is given by this equation. It is one divided by square root pi f mu into sigma. Right? So it depends upon the frequency of the signal as well as the material property. Mu is the uh, magnetic, uh, uh, it is the uh, permeability of the material, and sigma is the conductivity of the material, right? So the skin depth of the electromagnetic radiation depends upon the material property, okay? And uh, the microwaves have small wavelength, therefore the phase variations are repeat, okay? Meaning of this is that if some radiation, micro radiation is made to incident on a metallic sheet, then it reflects the electromagnetic, this microwave, 
right? And the phase of this reflected signal can be um, measured. Okay. So if the phase remains constant, that means the thickness of this sheet is constant. But if some minute change in the thickness of the metal sheet takes place, then there will be a change in the phase of the reflected signal. Right. So from this change in the phase, right? Phase is a measurable quantity. So change from the change in the phase of the reflected wave, one can say that the thickness of the metal sheet has changed. Okay, so in this way one can control the uh, one can monitor the thickness of the metal sheet. Then one can measure thickness of the dielectric sheet. Right? Dielectric material are transparent to the microwaves. Okay, so if we want to uh, monitor the thickness of the dielectric slab, then it can be made to incident by the microwave signal. And uh, this, this transmit the microwaves. So here again, the phase of the transmitted signal is measured. And if it remains constant, that means the thickness of the dielectric sheet is constant. And if it varies, that means the, there is a change in the thickness of the dielectric sheet. Similarly, one can continuously measure the wire diameter, right? Here again, the principle is like this. Uh, there is a horn antenna, right, which radiates the microwave and here is the, the wire, right? So wave radiated by horn 1 gets deflected by the wire and reaches the horn 2. A change in the wire diameter alters the phase and amplitude of the signal. And these changes can be detected easily. Right? So this is another uh, application area in measurement and control in industry. Right? Similarly, microwaves can be used to monitor and measurement of the moisture content in the different materials. Right? The dielectric constant of the moisture or water is very high. So if some material absorbs the water, then the dielectric constant of that material changes uh, by a large amount. Right? So by measuring the dielectric property of the material, one can have the information about the moisture content in that material. Right. Using this principle, one can monitor and measure the moisture content in the paper, in the textile materials, laminated wood sheets, right, in granulated or porous materials like soil, sand, clay, floor, corn, or bricks. Right. If some liquid absorbs the moisture, then that can also be monitored and measured. Then another important application area of microwave is in the microheating and this is because microwave produces the heating effect. Microwave heating is very much different than the conventional heating, right? So uh, how it differs from the conventional heating? Let us have a look at it. Microwave heating is quite different from conventional heating. It is based on the dielectric loss in the material in a microwave field. The material absorbs microwave energy and changes it into molecular and ionic kinetic energy through wave matter interaction at the atomic level. As a result, it is generated internally in the interaction space, which is the volume of the material. Right? So, meaning here is that microwaves produces the volumetric heating. That means it heats the material from inside. In conventional heating, we supply the heat from some heat source from the surface, outer surface of the material. And the heat transfer in the material takes place through the mechanism called the conduction, convection or the radiation. Right? So conventional heating is basically a surface heating, whereas microwave heating is a volumetric heating. So microheating is more, more faster than the conventional heating. 
okay then here in this figure the difference between the conventional heating and micro heating is shown this this is a very uh, known picture you must have seen this this picture explains all the three types of the heating conventional heatings right here some source of heat is there say uh, some fire is produced and which supplies heat to the this uh, this uh, vessel of a metal metallic vessel and some fluid is there inside it right so heat is provided to this vessel from the surface and heat transfer in this material takes place through the conduction uh, sorry through the convection right in this liquid material heat is transferred from lower surface to the upper surface through the convection okay and if we hold the this uh, holder of this container which is also of the uh, metal right then after some time we will feel heat here because heat has transferred through the process of conduction right from the surface to this area right this is the conduction so conduction of heat in solid so transfer of heat in solid takes place through conduction in fluids it takes place through conduction and another mode of transfer of heat is the through the radiation right if we keep our hands away from the source then also we feel heat so here the heat transfer is taking place through the radiation right this is the conventional heat in microwave heating the interaction between the matter and the microwave takes place molecules of the matter if they here the condition applies condition is what the matter should have the polar molecules right so when this material is exposed to the microwave the molecules of the matter uh, oscillates right they, they rotate uh, in the direction of the applied field right and as the field direction changes alternately at very high frequency the friction between the molecules of this uh, material takes place and this friction causes the heat it generates the heat right so here basically the heat is produced by the interaction between the microwaves and the and the material right but condition here is that the material should be microwave absorbing you cannot heat metals using the microwaves right because metals reflect the microwaves microwaves are uh, uh, cannot enter into the metals okay but if the material is lossy for example water water is the best example right which absorbs the microwaves so water can be heated using the microwave energy okay so once we have understood the difference between the microwave heating and the conventional heating we can have some idea about the dielectric loss here basically the uh, if we want to understand the micro heating we should have idea about the permittivity of the material and permittivity of the material is a complex quantity it has real part we call it dielectric constant and imaginary part is dielectric loss and this loss part is responsible for the heating of the material okay so when we expose the material to the micro radiation two types of interaction takes place between the field and the um, material right one is in the form of energy storage and this is a two way process some part of the energy from the matter is transferred to the field and from field to the this is storage property and another is the loss property is a one way right energy supplied by this field is absorbed by this material right through some interaction and matter gets heated okay and or we say that energy is lost right and this these two properties they are measurable right it can be quantified and the first part of this complex permittivity is called dielectric constant 
and second part is the dielectric loss. Dielectric loss measure, it is a measure of how much energy from the electric field is lost in the material. Okay, so this this part is responsible for dielectric heating, right? And here is an uh, equation for the heat dissipated in the uh, material when it is exposed to the microwave radiation. So this is the expression. It is uh, power dissipated in the material is equal to one half epsilon zero omega inti volume integral epsilon r double dash e square dv. Okay. And so there is a constant permittivity of free space. If we put it here, we get this one of the dissipated power in the material. So here you can see that dissipated power depends upon the dielectric loss of the material. Dielectric loss is a constant for a given material at a given frequency, right? So it depends upon that. It also depends upon the frequency of the micro radiation and it depends upon the strength of the electric field, right? So PD is a function of F epsilon R double dash and electric field, right? So this, all these three parameters, uh, dependence of on these three parameters of the dissipated power can be make use, can be made uh, use in different applications. For example, this uh, dependence of PD on epsilon R double dash can be used for material processing, right? And uh, because of this, this fact, they, we can provide the selective heating. Right. If you want to provide heating to a particular part of some material, then it is possible using the microwaves. Right? And uh, dependence of PD on E can be used uh, uh, for, uh, uh, it provides a flexibility uh, in controlled heating. Okay? So this is that. And now, uh, so microwave heating is used in the in the microwave oven, right? It is a home appliance. Many of us use the microwave oven at our home for cooking the food or for heating the food, right? And this microwave oven uses the microwaves where some microwave generator is used. And the generator, which we have already discussed, is a magnetron, which produces the uh, micro signal of frequency 2.45 gigahertz at around at between 600 to 150 watts, right? And this uh, uh, radiation is made to fall on the uh, material that is to be cooked. Okay, so this is the basic picture, and uh, this this can be explained in more detail. But uh, I think that now uh, it is time to complete. It is 5 p.m. So I should stop this lecture uh, by directly switching over to the conclusion part. Right? Uh, so now I will switch over to the conclusion part. Uh, and okay. So uh, I will. Uh, I have discussed some some of the applications. Uh, many more are there, right? I, uh, no, due to lack of time, I could not cover all the applications. But some applications I have discussed, and I think that it has uh, given you some glimpse that how important the microwaves are in our day-to-day -day life. So with this comment, I conclude. And, uh, Microwaves form the part of electromagnetic spectrum with frequency ranging from 300 megahertz to 300 gigahertz. Microwaves are further subdivided into several frequency bands depending upon the application and the convenience. We have seen that microelectronics differs greatly from the low frequency electronics. Microwaves have some unique properties which makes them suitable for various applications. Micro technology also has some advantages, disadvantages, like any other technology. We 
we have discussed about the disadvantages of the micro resource. An overview of the application of micro technology is given. Right? Communication, radar, remote sensing, medical field, industrial control and measurements, material processing, microchemistry, etc., are treated as important application areas of micro technology. And micro technology is a mature technology. Right? It is well mature. A lot of work is done in the micro technology. Right? So it is, we can say that it is a mature technology and there have been tremendous developments in the fields of microwaves. Still there is a large scope for further development in this area. And microwaves do not provide universal solution to all problems, but should be considered whenever all other processes fail to solve the problems. Right, with this I end this lecture. Thank you very much. And I thank KCG for providing me this opportunity to deliver a lecture on microwaves and its applications. Thank you all. Sir, yes. can it be used for power transmission? Uh, what? Um, microwaves? Like electrical power. Uh, uh, the microwave transmission lines are used for the uh, for transmission of the microwave signals, right, and for transmission of the power, electrical power, right, which is of low frequency, say 50 hertz, uh, we use it at our home, right, so it is a very low frequency, and for that the power transmission lines are used, right, but yes, uh, nowadays the research is going on to convert the solar energy into the uh, some usable form and to transmit that, that energy uh, from, this, uh, from the space or sky to the earth using the microwaves, right? Uh, the uh, development is there in this area, right? Research work is going on. But uh, for trans... So, thank you, uh, Vipin Rana, sir, for this wonderful session. I thanking you on behalf of KCG, sir. Okay. Thank you for uh, sharing your valuable time with us. Okay.